to Proverbs at chapter number 31. I brought my Mother's Day sermon with me today. Um, my mother is going to be with the Lord and I have nowhere to go. So for the next four and a half hours, <laughs> we will be in Proverbs at chapter 31. No, I know you're ready to go. You're ready to take your mother out or you're ready to go cook for your mother. On Mother's Day, you go all out. And on Father's Day, you just throw a piece of meat on the ground <laughs> and wipe the dust off it and make us eat it. But uh, turn with me to Proverbs 31, commencing in verse number 10 through verse number 31. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships. She bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, a candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold a distaff. She stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she stretches forth her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Verse 30 and 31 reads, Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Thank you. You may be seated. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. A long reading of this passage, sermon for 10 minutes. <laughs> uh, if you missed the reading, you missed the message this morning. Um, an elementary school teacher was teaching her class about the positive and negative ends of a magnet. And she said to them in teaching that magnets pick up things. Uh, magnets, it's the job of a magnet. It's the force inside a magnet to pick up things. Magnet, the word magnet she taught them has six letters in it. Uh, a magnet picks up things. It's positive and a negative side. And the magnet picks up things. And so she gave them a test, and on the test, she just threw a question in there to ask them what has six letters, starts with M, and picks up things. And 50% of the class wrote, mother. <laughs> Somebody going to get that on the way to, to Papa Do. She, she picks up things. She's always busy. She's always providing. She's always making the home sweet. She's always making life better. She's always, she's always doing something for the ones that she loves. 
She's always looking out. She's always providing. She's always busy. There's no such thing as a mother, a real mother, who is not always concerned about her family, concerned about her children, making sure that the house runs well making sure that everybody in the family is doing well. As a matter of fact, sometimes she neglects herself uh, to look out for her husband and her children when she's a real godly woman. And that's what the text describes, God's description of a godly woman. There are several things I want to run through real quickly here to describe to us what a godly woman woman is. I, wanted to, I want us to look first in verse 10 through verse number 12 as at her standing as a godly woman. Her standing as a godly woman. Verse number 10 says in this passage, who can find a virtuous woman? Uh, her price is far above rubies. I want you to notice, brothers and sisters, that the word in the text virtuous does not mean what we have come to make the word virtuous mean. Uh, the word is not talking about uh, uh, necessarily uh, the virtue that we look at virtue as somebody who is chaste and pure, although that is, the, that is a, an application of that word. But the word virtuous in this text, in the Hebrew, means far more than uh, the virtuous that we have come to understand. The word virtuous in the text means who can find a woman who has the strength of an army? Uh, she's pretty. She's, she's dainty. She's delicate, she smells good, she's perfumed, she's nice, she's courteous, she's polite, but she has the strength of an army. Uh, she, she's good looking, uh, but don't cross her. Uh, she's poised, but don't get on the wrong side. She's all that goes into what a woman is, but she's virtuous in that she has the strength of an army. Who can find a, a virtuous woman? Who can find a woman with the strength of an army? Her price is far above rubies. Uh, that kind of woman can't be bought. Uh, no, no trinkets you show her can turn her head. Uh, no, no man, no man can buy her when she has the strength of an army. Because uh, she can walk her own way. Uh, she can take care of herself. Uh, she's married because she wants to be married. But by herself, she still has the strength of an army. Her price is far above ruby. Uh, her, her perfection is in verse number 11. The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. This woman is trustworthy. She always has the best interests of the one she loves constantly on her mind. She wakes up thinking about her loved ones. She goes to bed thinking about her loved ones. Something, something is wrong with this, with this new kind of mother uh, who has children, but they want to look out for themselves. You sharp and pretty and dressed up and your children look like... Uh, something, something's wrong with that. Some, somebody help me preach just a minute. Uh, uh, you, you, you got children, but you want to find yourself. Uh, you you, you want to have some fun. Your, your days for fun is over when you have children. Uh, your days for finding yourself and, and for self-discovery is over. You should have discovered yourself before you had any children, before you had a husband. Now you got to put yourself on the back burner and give your whole self to your children because a godly woman is trustworthy. See how quiet y'all getting right there? Now, now we can make this as long as it needs to be. Or we can make this as short as it needs to be. It all depends on your response to this message. Um, you, 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 need to, 
You need to get off of Facebook. And, 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 and put your face in a book. And, and stop taking selfies of yourself. Somebody help me preach here. You ain't all that no more. No, you have a different responsibility right now because your family has got to come first because you are trustworthy. And then verse 12, uh, verse 10 looks at her price. Verse 11 looks at her perfection. But verse 12 looks at her plan. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. As a matter of fact, this woman is an asset not a liability. Uh, she is an asset and not a liability. Because of her price, because of her trustworthiness, she's an asset to her family. Uh, she, she's not looking out for herself. God's going to take care of her. But she's looking out for her husband and for her family. And when you do it God's way, God will always see to it that when you look for his blessings, you don't have to look far. Uh, when you are an asset and not a liability, the scripture says later on in that text, her children will arise and call her blessed. Her husband will praise her in the gates. Verse 10 talks about her price. Verse 11 talks about her perfection. Verse 12 talks about her plan. Verses 10 through 12 gives us God's description of a godly woman in her standing. But now verses 13 through 18 move from standing to her sacrifices. This godly woman is always making sacrifices. She seeketh wool and flax and worketh willingly with her hands. She's like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She rises up also while it is yet night and giveth meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruits of her hands she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good. Her candle goeth not out by night. Uh, that's a sacrifice. She's always making sacrifices. I remember my, my brother was, got married to this girl in California. And they came home and he, they had some twin girls. Uh, and the girls uh, had pneumonia. And my mother stayed up all night long caring for those babies. My sister-in-law had fallen asleep. Uh, my brother had fallen asleep. But my mother stayed up all night uh, caring for those twins. She would not go to sleep until their breathing got regular. Uh, she would not rest until their, their appetite came back. Uh, that's a woman who makes sacrifices. Uh, my mother would not go to sleep at night until every last one of us were in the house. And when our foot would touch the porch, she knew which one of us was coming on the porch. If, if, if somebody came in sideways, she knew it was Steve. Uh, if somebody jumped on the porch, she knew it was Lee trying to get in late when she told him what his curfew was. If somebody came up the steps and stopped a while, she knew it was Carl because he was always looking around him to see what was going on. And if somebody got in through the window, she knew it was Bobby because he was always trying to sneak in because he always did something he had no business. And if somebody stayed in the house, she knew it was me because I wasn't going out at night. Uh, I, I didn't party. I didn't do a whole lot of young adult stuff. I had to do all my sinning in church. Well, I wish I had time to stay right there. But she sacrifices with her talents, and then she gives her family her time. Uh, it's, it's, it's getting to be sad now uh, that I, I weep for these children who have young parents. Uh, I, was, I was sitting in Luby's yesterday, uh, yesterday evening and this beautiful young family lovely young woman handsome father had two beautiful children sitting at the table and they didn't look at those children one time because they were on their phone watching and texting and doing whatever they were doing on their phone because we are so preoccupied with these devices 
that we are, we are present, but we are not in the moment. We, we are there, but we are absent. Talk back to me if you can. When I was a boy, we sat down at the table and we, we were served by my mother. And they asked us, how was our day? How are we doing in school? What's going on in your life? You didn't go in your room and slam the door and bring the food in your room. First of all, you didn't have a room to bring your food in. And if you slammed the door, my mother would take it off the hinges. Because this is my house. I wish I had somebody who was raised like I was raised. They made the rules. They determined the, the, the conduct in the house because it was not your house. Uh, but we are alienated from our children because we are so busy Instagramming, texting, Facebooking. And then our jobs keep us so busy. Then we have such a busy social life. We were in Jack and Jill, and then we got to run to our Weight Watchers meeting, and then we got to run to the gym, and then we leave the gym, and we got to go to our yoga class, and we leave yoga, and we got to go out with our girlfriends, and by the time we get home, our children are asleep or in the house doing what they do, and we've been in the house with them an entire week and haven't spoken to them. But a real godly woman makes sacrifices of her time she's present and in the moment I wish I had time to stay right there but let me rush on away from standing and sacrifice the verses 19 through 25 talks about her service she laid her hands to the spindle and her hands to hold the, 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 the distaff she strengthened she stretcheth out her hand to the poor. She reaches forth her hands to the needy. She's not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She makes herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes fine linen and sells it and delivers girdles to the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in the time to come. A godly woman labors. She works. She doesn't want anybody to give her anything. She goes out of her way to give her service. Uh, growing up as a boy, I remember just like it was yesterday, somebody was sick in our community. Those old women would go to their house and clean up for them and wash and iron their clothes, comb their children's hair, cook and make sure that they had everything they needed. And then they would leave and come back the next morning, a different shift of them, would come back the next morning to make sure that they provided for that family because they gave their service, not because they had to do it, it was a labor of love. Because when you're really godly, you go out of your way to help people who can't help you back. You missed that last part. You go out of your way to help people who can't do anything for you in return. She labors with her hands. Strength and honor are her clothing and she shall rejoice in time to come. Listen, even if she's not rewarded on this side, even if she's not appreciated on this side, when she gets to heaven, uh, God will reward her for going out of her way with her labor and her love. That scripture talks about a woman's standing, a woman's sacrifice, a woman's service. And then verse number 26 talks about her speech. Hmm. She ain't cussing everybody. Uh, every other word out of her mouth is not... Um, <laughs> She openeth her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. She is, she is gentle in her speech. She guides 
in her speech. She's always giving guidance. She's always imparting wisdom. That's what a godly woman does. She's always sharing wisdom. And that wisdom comes from her experience. That wisdom comes from walking with the Lord. She's gentle because she too has made some mistakes. And God has led her around those mistakes. So she is wise to give younger women godly counsel. Uh, when, when you read the book of Titus. Uh, Titus said the older women ought to teach the younger women. I wish I had a Bible reading. Teach them how to be sober in their speech. Teach them how to be obedient to their husbands. Teach them how to keep house. How to keep house. How to keep house. To keep house. Read it. It's right, it's right in the text. Uh, how to wash, how to cook, how to be hospitable, how to be respectable. When you leave your house, walk with your head erect. Look like a woman of God. Look like, like, like God has filled your life with his spirit. And when you walk like that, you get respect like that. Uh, not... Not, not, not with a, a piercing in your tongue and one on your eyebrow and Ray Ray's name on your breast and, and Jojo on your neck. Well, suppose you married Pookie and you got Jojo's name on your leg. Y'all might as well come on and get with me because it ain't going to get no better. Listen, I, I, was, I was saying this to my daughter and some other young girls, that you have to be careful with all of this stuff that you're doing to yourself. Because people are not hiring you on a job looking like you just got out of a tattoo parlor. I, I mean, people are scared of you. I, I don't want to be in the hospital and have nobody serving me, waiting on me, giving me medication, looking like they just got out the joint. Come on, help me preach if you can. I, I, don't, want, I don't want you serving me in a restaurant. I don't want you doing anything for me if, if you look like, you, like, like something's wrong with you. And we have got to train these young people that to get off of all of this social media stuff, writing all this stupid stuff on your, on your Facebook page, because when you go to apply for a job, they ask you about your Facebook account. And if you're naked with your picture on there, come on, talk back to me if you can. How are you going to be a model teaching somebody in a classroom and you got a beer in your hand on your social media page? You're looking like a fool trying to give leadership and that's not godly as a woman. I'm going I'm to I'm get to that. I'm going I'm to get to the men at Father's Day, but today is Mother's Day and I'm trying to help us to understand that a godly woman guides with her wisdom and she's gentle in her speech. Yeah, brothers and sisters, that's her standing, her sacrifices, her service, her speech. But verse 27 talks about her selflessness. Selflessness. It's right in verse 27. She looked at well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. A godly woman, a godly mother watches and she works. She watches and she works. She's wise as a serpent. Harmless as a dove. That's nothing that escapes her gaze. A real mother, a real woman has eyes behind her head. 
She watches when you don't think she's watching. She sees what you don't think she sees. You can't get away with nothing. You think because she was born in the 1930s that she don't know nothing. But that means she's 60 years smarter than you are. I wish I had one or two witnesses here. Uh, when she used to come on the radio, um, uh, Yolanda Adams uh, was talking about uh, her mother and uh, talking about uh, the kind of relationship she had with her mother. And she said her mother was blind in her right eye. And she, didn't, she couldn't see out of that eye. And her mother one morning was just after her to get up to get ready for school. And she just kept on after her and kept on after her. And Yolanda said she was slow getting up and she was dragging trying to get up and wanting to do what she wanted to do. And she was really disrespectful this certain morning. And she said she got on her mother's right side and stuck out her tongue. <laughs> because her mother didn't see on her right side. And she said when she woke up. <laughs> when she woke up. She was in fourth period in high school. She said she don't know how she got to school. She don't know what happened in first, second, and third period. When she woke up, it was fourth period because her mother hit her with a right cross. Did y'all see that woman jump on that boy when he was in that riot in Baltimore? I was looking at my mama on CNN. She jumped on that Negro and turned him every which way but loose. We need mothers right now who will walk up to their children and just hit them right in the mouth and say, open your mouth one more time. I'm a doctor. Have I got a witness here? Because if you raise them at home, the police won't have to kill them. Train up a child in the way that he should go and when he's old, he will not depart from it. And even if he act a fool, you just get right with him. Yeah. They, they, were, they were interviewing that woman. And they were asking her why she was tearing his clothes off. She said, because I bought them clothes. And she said, I recognize how he walks. He had a mask on, they said. She said, I, I, but I know how he walks. That's because a real mother watches. Somebody ought to help me preach it. You can't get away with anything because she knows how you walk even when you got a hoodie on. Now, now those of you who were raised like me, uh, those of you who were raised like I was raised, if you act a fool in school and they had to get off their job to go see about you, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trembling right now. Just remembering how my mother had to come to school and she didn't take me in the bathroom. She didn't take me out on the sidewalk. I was in Mrs. LeCocq's seventh grade English class and she jumped on me right there in the classroom. And my friends were saying, ooh, man, she tan. She said, what you say? She said, no, ma'am, it's leaning to me. I didn't say nothing. <laughs> because not only did she raise her children, she could raise somebody else's children. But you say something to these children around here, the parents want to fight with you, but we need everybody to help us raise them because we can't be with them all the time. Spare the rod, spoil the child. Foolishness is bound up in it. But the rod of correction will drive it far from him that woman said she went out there and got with that boy on the street because she recognized how he walked because a real mother watches got eyes behind her head can't get away with nothing I never could understand how my mother could whip driving and we in the back seat 
And, and I mean a good whipping. I'm, I'm not talking about a little pat here and there. I'm talking about when she got through with you, you just went take a nap. Because they, 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 they were determined that, that, that you have some sins. Now, if you were going to be a fool, you're going to be a fool out of this house. But as long as you're under my protecting presence, I have a responsibility as a parent to watch over you. Uh, she is selfless. Verses 28 and verse 29 talks about her satisfaction. Her children... Rise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. A real mother is satisfied today for two reasons. Her children praise her, and her husband praises her. Children who have had good mothers ought to have the good sense to say thank you Lord. Somebody loved me enough to teach me right from wrong. Somebody loved me enough to guide me, to, to strengthen me, to encourage me, to make me the man or the woman I am and I would not have had that influence were it not for a godly mother who gave her all in sacrifice for me. My mother cooked in the cafeteria at the elementary school I went to. And I would come through the line and I always had my button, my top button buttoned up. And I'd pass through the lunch line and she'd unbutton that button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was always ashy because I was kind of dark when I was young. <laughs> and I was kind of ashy. And uh, my mother would rub her hand in that cooking oil. And, 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 and get me all shined up. And, and, and I can still feel that warm hand on my face right now. I can still feel that caress on my cheeks right now as a small boy in the second grade. But that same hand that caressed me was the same hand that corrected me. And parents, you ought to have a hand that caresses and corrects. Have I got a witness here? And today, at almost 56 years old, I appreciate both the caressing and the correcting. I wouldn't even be in church today if my mother didn't teach me right from wrong. And then there's this last word in verses 30 and 31, and I'm through. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. I've talked about her standing. I've talked about her sacrifices. I've talked about her service. I talked about her speech. I talked about her selflessness. I talked about her satisfaction. Now let me give you finally the secret to her godliness. The secret is she despises compliments. It's right here in verse 30. Favor, compliments, is deceitful. Because men will tell you how good you look to get something from you. And if you don't have the strength of an army... If you're not virtuous with the strength of an army, your head can easily be turned by a Negro who is favoring you. But favor is deceitful. And a godly woman says, now please. You actually think I'm going to fall for that line? Really, now all these children I got and, and, and all the trouble I got, you think I'm going to get another problem? By bringing you in here and you ain't working? I got 99 problems. And a broke man ain't one.
I wish I had time to stay right there. You can't turn her head with compliments. Her secret is she deplores conceit. She hates, she deplores conceit. It, I'm still in verse number 30. And beauty is vain. Because a real godly woman knows that beauty is more than outward appearance. Beauty is more than hips and thighs and breasts and hair. Beauty is deeper than that. Beauty goes deep down on the inside and it radiates to the outside because here is how it expresses itself. A woman who fears the Lord. That's what makes a beautiful woman. A woman who loves God. A woman who's been born again. A woman who knows that Christ has been good in her life. A woman who raises her children to go to church. A woman who knows how to pray. That's a beautiful woman. When you have known sorrow early in life and God has blessed you as a woman, there's a beauty that wrinkles can't fade. There's a beauty that time cannot erase. And the secret is she is a woman who fears the Lord. She loves God. She loves Christ. She loves the church. She loves to live a godly Christian life. And when you do it God's way, God will always let your own works praise you in the gates. You, you, you don't need a man to praise you. You don't need a man to compliment you. You don't need a man to turn your head. Christ is all. And he has made the difference in your life and you can make it by yourself. Because a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised.